So welcome to our flip lecture tour on crystalline structure. In this uh, lecture, we are going to consider four different items. First, we will talk a little bit more about lattice cells and their identification of cells in crystals. Uh, secondly, we will continue our review of different important crystalline structures. And then we will speak a little bit about symmetry operations, which are fundamental to classify crystals. And finally, we will make a, a review on the FCC and BCC crystals and see the different lattice that can be used to describe them. So, remember that lattice cells is, uh, they are described by uh, three vectors that we are we usually call a b and c or a1 a2 and a3 or we can make the choice to um, to use the modulus of the vectors and the angles between them to describe the cell as depicted in the in the, fig in the figure so how to identify a lattice cell in a crystal here you have an example of a crystal two-dimensional crystal having atoms represented by circles. Different colors and sizes are used for different type of atoms. And then to find out which cell oh, we can use to describe uh, the crystalline structure in this, in this two-dimensional system, we, we are going to look for atoms which environment is equal. Let's take one, this violet atom here. You see that they have two other atoms at the, at the top, at right and left. So this is the same situation than for this one. So these are equivalent points. It's not the case on this one. This one is not having violet atoms up right and left. So this is not a point of the lattice. So we are taking this, this, and we find this for that. So we can represent the lattice in such a way. And represent the lattice in such a way. And, and now that we have the lattice, we can identify the bases. So the bases are the different atoms that you need to describe all the atoms in one lattice basis. So let's start from the violet ones. You have four violet atoms, but they are in the corners, so shared by four cells, so they count by one, and another one inside the cell, and this counts by one. So that we have a total of two violet atoms, and uh, then we have three yellow inside, and two on the uh, lines, and these that are in the lowest lines are shared by two, so they count half. So we have a total of four yellow atoms. And the same way, you can count that you have eight blue atoms. So this the, the basis comprises two violets, four yellows, and eight blue atoms. And then, of course, you'll need to uh, give the coordinates with respect to the to our, our, our reference system. This is not a unique choice. We, you have a total equivalent one here, and this cell is a different cell, representing another aspect of the symmetry of the crystal, the hexagonal packing of the blue atoms in particular. But you can, as an exercise, find that you need the same atomic basis to describe this crystal. Let's now continue our review of important crystalline structure. The first one here is sodium chloride or rock salt. It's a diatomic crystal, it's a cubic crystal, and you can describe it as the superposition of two FCC structures. One having one type of atoms, atoms type A, and the other one, the rose ones, atoms type B. And the FCC uh, lattices are put together by sh a shift of 
one half zero zero one half of the vector a one zero of vector a two and zero vector a three so they are very important in ionic salts salts like sodium chloride bromum kbr and other salts another diatomic structure is the cesium chloride that appears in other ionic salts and you can describe it as two simple crystals shift by one half, one half, one half. Let's remark that this is not a BCC structure because BCC structure means that this atom will be the same type of this one, and it's not the case. The diamond structure is particularly important technologically because it's uh, the structure of silicon uh, that you find uh, in the in the electronic industry is an FCC structure with two uh, with a basis uh, but it is easier to describe it or can be described by an FCC structure or two FCC structures one of them shift by one four one four one four so you find it in diamond in silicon germanium so the most covalent system. We have the diatomic equivalent of this, just by one of taking one of the shift, uh, the shift uh, structure having a different type of atom, and this is also a very important structure because it's the one that you you find in the two, six, and three, five semiconductor systems, like the ones that are given here in example. So the third part of this lecture, let's talk a little bit about symmetry operations. We already know about the translation symmetry. The fact that we find absolutely an equivalent uh, environment by translation of a translation vector of the lattice in, in this in lattice. So the other uh, symmetry operations that are important and these operations again do not modify the crystal the most elemental one is the identity doesn't change anything but we have also rotation through an axis reflection through a plane inversion with respect to a inversion symmetry point what is called improper rotations that is a rotation followed by a reflection on a particular or perpendicular plane of the axis, to the axis, and there are some few others. So these symmetry operations, in fact, um, they, they are operations that increase us from a group, groups in, in the mathematical point of view. An example of these, uh, of an important symmetry operation is the rotation axis and we define a n-fold rotation symmetry operation as a rotation of 2 pi over n and in fact in a crystal in a periodic lattice only the case of n equal 1 2 3 4 and 6 are allowed and this is shown here this is uh, c2 is the way it is our call it cn is equal to c 2 pi over n. So this is a, a two fold uh, rotation axis and is uh, and, and is symbolized by this ellipse. A three fold axis symbolized by, by a triangle with a square which symbolizes c4 and with an hexagon this is six six fold axis of rotation. So you remark that five-fold rotation is not a lot and why so in fact five-fold rotation is not compatible with the translation symmetry you have here a crystalline structure having four and six-fold rotation axis that allow for the reproduction the, the filling of the space total fill of the space by reproducing the uh, the unitary cells in the case of a pentagonal symmetry 
uh, axis of uh, rotation, you cannot make it compatible with the translation symmetry. You will not be able to fill the space without leaving empty space, and then really you cannot produce a crystal. Uh, the lattice are classifi classified um, considering the symmetry operation, which constitute a group that can need to be used to describe these crystals. And well, this is a little bit. Uh, we'll need more time to, to explain all the different type of classifications. But we have already seen that we have the Bravi lattice, and that there are fourteen Bravi lattice in three D. Uh, in two dimensions, we have five Bravi lattice. I show in this slide, show in this slide, the five Bravi lattice that uh, exist for a two-dimensional crystal: oblique, rectangular, center rectangular, hexagonal, square. You remote that center rectangular can be described with by either one unitary cell or a center cell, which uh, is rectangular, as is given by his name. Um, so the crystal classification, when you consider all the symmetry, all the symmetries, translation, and all this that we have described, we end up with 230 classes of crystals that are called the space groups or feather of groups. And they are described in this in the international tables of crystallography. Finally, we are going to discuss now the BCC and FCC Bravo lattice. The conventional lattice cells we have already seen them. You have here the BCC lattice, and this uh, has two lattice points per lattice cell, and the FCC has four lattice points per lattice cell. But we can describe with the BCC with a primitive lattice cell, and this is shown here. If you take three neighboring cubes like that, the three neighboring cells, and you take uh, the common edge here, and you rely vectors from this point to the center of the other cubes, this defines vectors A1, A2, and A3 that are given with these coordinates. And this is a unitary cell. That means that the volume is going of the this cell divided, defined by these cell parameters is half of the volume of the ordinary cell. And you can check that the angle between the edges and edges of these of this three uh, vectors is the same and is 109.3 degrees. In the case of the FCC cell, we, uh, we can structure, we can also find a primitive cell, and this time we, we take a conventional cell, FCC, with the atoms here or lattice points in the center of the faces, and then we uh, can construct a unitary cell by relying one edge to the neighboring um, positions in the center of the faces. And this defines A1, A2, and A3. And you have here the corresponding coordinates in which X and Y are unitary vectors. And the angles here are 60 degrees. And the volume of this cell is going to be one fourth of the uh, conventional cell. So which are the BCC, the weakness side cells of the BCC and the FCC? So remember that this is constructed by taking one of the lattice points at the origin and then you, by taking the bisects with respect to the neighboring uh, lattice point in two dimensions. Here is for the case of an hexagonal lattice. This gives an excellent view. This we already saw. In the case of the BCC structure, we will take the uh, conventional cell with an atom in the center and then or with a lattice point in the center. And then we have here the different planes 
uh, this one with respect bisex with respect to this neighbor. This one will be the bisection with respect to the neighbor at uh, lattice points that we will find in the center of the cell that is up on this cube. And this we find this is polyhedron. So this polyhedron here is the Wigner side cell of the PCC cell. And then you can uh, fill the space totally by putting adjacent cells like it's shown here. In the case of the FCC cell, well, if we take the conventional cell, you can see it here. This is the conventional uh, FCC cell with atoms in white in the center of the faces, but we don't have an atom in the center. So in order to construct here the Wigner side cell of the FCC, what we are going to do is translate the cell, the same volume, but one half of the cube, and then we find this atom that is in the center that is going to be found the center of the cell. And then we are going to make all the bisex. And this is what is done here. And this defines this volume, this polyhedron, that is the Wigner's size cell. Of the so these are the Wigner's side cells of FCC and BCC structures. And we will